dear friends welcome to our video in today's class means we are beginning from today a new series of video on the plant pathology that is the very important and very basic thing that is the classification of the phytopathogens see phytopathogens include all the pathogens that comes and that causes the diseases to the plants that we study uh, the diseases we study on different plants and all every pathogen comes under this classification we deal with the fungi bacteria and all other things so let's not waste the time let's uh, begin the concepts and the very first is uh, i'm sorry uh, the very important thing to note is the classification explained in this video or in this series of videos are based on the phylogeny phylogeny means the based on close related organisms see based on the close related organisms based on their dna structures or their behaviors or something uh, but not as the uh, external character that we deal uh, in the ainsworth classification that's also very important ainsworth classification as uh, it has been largely adopted in various sectors but the recent one is based on the phylogeny after completing the phylogenetic classification we shall have a glance on the ainsworth classification also so in this video we deal with the two important kingdoms uh, that is protozoa and uh, chromista uh, i will explain you a few things uh, that is in this video we deal with the protozoa and chromista so domain uh, remember friends in this uh, what phylogenetic classification we come under three important domains one is archaea uh, then the eukarya then bacteria see this classification is given by uh, carl wiss carl wiss given this classification uh, that is it is very huge concept to understand based on the evolution concepts but we learn the living organisms or whatever the organism we deal with are comes under uh, eukarya and bacteria also when it comes to the bacteria and all but the fungi and other classification are under eukarya so okay let me clear this okay so under eukarya domain there comes the five class uh, five kingdoms but we deal with the that is the phytopathogens comes under the three kingdoms one is protozoa another one is chromista the next comes the fungi in the chromista we also have some uh, false fungi and all uh, that is oomycetes uh, we shall deal with that and this is true fungi and this is the protozoa i will explain the characteristics of this just remember the classification under eukarya protozoa chromista and fungi uh, now let's see the protozoa under protozoa we come across the four important i'm sorry four important uh, phylums that is plasmodiophyra mycota acrasio mycota canosova mycota mixo mycota these are the four phylums okay now let's move ahead so under protozoa the very important for uh, agriculture students uh, the for the plant pathogen students is phylum plasmodiophora mycota see this plasmodiophora mycota phylum is very important and uh, this the class plasmodiophora mycetes and order plasmodiophorales and family plasmodiophoraceae this is all just for the information and the very important genus we come across is sorry genus plasmodiophora polymyxa and spongiospora these are the three important genus we come across under this protozoa so let's see some of the characters uh, that comes under this the kingdom protozoa let's see some general characteristics see the phagotrophic and phagocytosis mode of nutrition is generally and very common in protozoa but plant parasites obtain food by absorption i hope the plant parasites here means plasmodiophorales or uh, mixomycota or whatever we saw uh, such plant parasites obtain the nutrition by absorbing the food and remaining all they uh, 
they get their food by phagocytosis or phagotrophic mode of nutrition. And in protozoa offense, the very common is amoeba. See, why we call amoeba uh, is very that is very important protozoa means it is generally remember amoeba, it has it doesn't have that uh, particular cell wall and all, it is just a protoplasm that is floating. That is such character is very common in this. In plasmodiophores also, uh, I will explain that. Okay, uh, let's see that when we come when we see the characteristics of plasmodiform macata. And they don't form hyphase and they generally lack cell wall. They generally don't have cell wall and they don't form hyphae also as we see in the fungi. And friends, if there is cell wall, if in case usually they lack cell wall, if in case there is cell wall, uh, it is mainly of cellulose. And they produce the motile zoospores as asexual spores, but both are whiplash and unequal in size. See? This is the uh, zoospore, let's consider. And they has two flagella and, okay, wait. And these both are all whiplash, whiplash flagella. In generally, when we see under umicota and all, there we see both tinsel and uh, Whiplash flagella, but remember in protozoa and the plasmodium whatever you see the organisms, they have two flagellas that are whiplash. Okay, let's move ahead. And under that, we see the various important phylums, uh, that is, four important phylums. One is Acrasiomycota amoeboid slime molds. These slime molds entirely come under protozoa and they feed by saprophytically or feed by phagocytosis, display amoeboid mortality. I said the importance of the amoeboid mortality in protozoa and spore wall contains cellulose. See, I said uh, cell wall or something, but here spore wall will be there uh, as in other case, the cell wall is usually lacking. So spore wall that contains cellulose. Chitin is almost completely absent in the protozoa. So we don't see such things, we only see cellulose. I said while explaining the importance of the cell wall uh, or the chitin content, I said from the lower organisms, it turns from cellulose to chitin. That is lower organisms to higher cellulose to chitin. So it is lower one, uh, so they mainly have cellulose. These acrasiomycota are very important because they are significant in the organic matter turnover. As I said, it is saprotrophic. They depend on uh, decayed matter and that is, they make a very good uh, turnover on the soils or the organic matters. Okay, next comes the next phylum that is mixomycota or plasmodial slime molds. So I said uh, while explaining that is mixomycota have a phagotropic mode of nutrition that is they absorb food by absorption. The very important organisms physarium polycephalum contain high levels of lipids and source for the production of the biodiesel. See whatever I'm explaining is uh, don't just see it as in a diseases point of view. These are just the classification that comes under the particular kingdoms or all. Just see whatever important in it and remember the or the characteristic features or the physical behaviors and all so that in further studies you will have a clear idea and what is right and which is wrong or the better way of analyzing the diseases that's it i can say so under mixomycota you can just remember that it is a, it has a good source for the production of biodiesel that is physarum polycephalum so next comes the very important for the agriculture students that is the plasmodiophoromycota it is endoparasitic slime mold that is remember the word endoparasitic and here there exists the alteration of generation that is two different plasmodia in the life cycle we don't see only one type two different uh, types of plasmodia plasmodia that is a protein plasma that is the act of fructification a fruiting body formation, uh, nothing exists here. Possess a cruciform type of nuclear division. This form one of the unique uh, way of nuclear division. That is, we say 
uh, type that is closely formed type of nuclear division and much information is not available uh, but through this uh, they undergo nuclear division but not as usual in others and the sexual reproduction is isogamous copulation and the resting spores are formed in the host cells so the best organism is the plasmodiophora brassicae that is the club root of cabbage and uh, spongospora subterranean powdery scab of potato and polymixer and spongospora these are vectors for viruses many viruses they perform as a vectors so uh, remaining two uh, phylums that is one is dictyostelio mycota these are the cellular slime molds and there is no much uh, importance in this dictyostelio mycota and there comes the another phylum i have not named this phylum because these come under kingdom protozoa and uh, These come under the kingdom protozoa, but this phylum comes under heterolobosia lineage. That is different lineage, not in the as usual lineage what other came under. So, but as it is under the protozoa, I have mentioned here as we have few important organism or one important genus that is causing the diseases. So they have one cell motile wallless microorganism that is the phytomonas leptovasorum on coffee, phytomonas franci on cassava, phytomonas staheli on coconut or oil palm. Remember the phytomonas. If you remember, if you come across the uh, phytomonas, then then think that this comes under the protozoa. Which has a the organism which has a plasmod amoeboid plasma or something, so you can and there is no much fructification or etc etc comes under this. So just remember that. Yes, friends, I end this video. Uh, I thought of completing the concept, but it's okay. I will deal with the chromista in the next video, uh, so that we have a complete clear image on the things. And let's not make it a very lengthy video. It's already a more than ten minutes. We'll meet in the next week and complete the Chromista concepts. Thank you.